Okay, Google, turn the studio lights on. Okay, turning on three lights. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I colour grade my S Log 3 footage from looking like this to something like this. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Andy and I make filmmaking tutorials right here on YouTube. Colour grading for me is a three part process and the first step takes place in the camera. Getting your white balance right in the camera is going to make your life so much easier when it comes to editing and grading your footage. Likewise, it's equally as important to get the exposure right in the camera before you begin editing. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks I use to ensure I get the proper white balance and exposure before I hit record. So before we begin, it's important to understand what log footage actually is, what its benefits are, when you'd use it and when you might not want to use it. So basically log footage is a very wide dynamic range picture profile which means there's going to be lots of details in the highlights and the shadows. This in turn gives us a lot of flexibility when it comes to colour grading and editing our footage in post-production. If we were simply to use the standard picture profile that comes with the camera, the image would appear nice and vivid and saturated and sometimes this is preferable, especially for things like vlogs where you just want to get a nice clean image out quickly uh, it will be easy to edit because most of the colour grading is done for you already. However, if you want to apply your own LUTs and your own looks to the image then this method sometimes is not the best option as you have far less detail to work with. That being said, let's have a look at the camera settings. Now the first thing you want to do is lock in your white balance. So this is the Godox SL6 that I'm using to light this side of my face here and it shoots at a Kelvin scale of 5600. I think this light here is pretty similar, if not exactly the same. So if you know the Kelvin value of the light that you are using, then just put that into the custom white balance settings on the Kelvin scale there. If you don't know what Kelvin scale the light you're using is on, then Using the camera presets are fine, just pick one that matches the closest to the lighting scenario that you're in, whether it's daylight, shade, tungsten, or fluorescent, or any of the other light sources there, as this can cause temperature changes and colour shifts to happen in the recording process. With the footage shot, let's dive into Final Cut and take a look at the next step in the colour grading process. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open a new project and drag your footage down into the timeline. We are using this talking head segment, as you can see here. The next thing you want to do is make an adjustment layer. Now, this isn't a native plugin to Final Cut, but I'll leave a link below to where you can download this adjustment layer. So just drag that on top and stretch it out above the footage. This is where we're going to make our colour adjustments on this layer so we're not affecting the actual footage below. Once you've done that you want to navigate across to the colour tab and this is our basic colour correction screen. You've got saturation, exposure and colour values that we can alter all from this tab but I prefer to use the colour wheels. In here you'll find the adjustments for your overall master that will do a global adjustment to all the footage, but also you have a bit more flexibility with your shadows, highlights and mid-tones. So on the left of each of the wheels is your saturation and on the right is your exposure. Dragging the arrow down will darken the image and dragging it up will bring your highlights up. So for a bit more detailed information you can open the colour and effects workspace and this just brings up our scopes for our colours and exposure. So in the Luma tab you'll see the waveform showing our highlights and shadows. So we want to use this information to help us get a proper accurate exposure. So you can just drag your shadows down to where it says zero, don't go below this or you will clip the blacks and lose that information. Likewise, when you're adjusting your highlights, you want to bring that up slightly, up to 100, but don't go above. 
so we can toggle our effect on and off to see the adjustments we've made. So we can cool the mid-tones or warm them up by dragging the wheel from the centre and then using the saturation tab on the left to bring up the colour or desaturate slightly and just play with the exposure values using the wheel on the right hand side. Just make some global adjustments with the master exposure to bring up the image and then maybe just drop the shadows ever so slightly just to get some contrast back in the image. That's looking pretty good. Maybe just bring the mids down a fraction and toggle on and off to see the adjustments that we've made. You can toggle the adjustment layer on and off using V on the keyboard and that will let you see your effects before and after colour correction. Once we've made our initial corrections we can go ahead and make a second adjustment layer where we can fine tune our effects. So repeat that process by dragging an adjustment layer above your first correction. Now in this clip I like how most of it looks but the background is looking a little blue. So I'm going to go to the hue saturation curves and in the hue versus saturation I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and just drag a small area over that wall in the background there. So that's pinpointed the hue and we're just going to drop that down and get the background back to black the way it is looking in real life. So that hasn't altered the rest of the image, just those particular blue hues. And toggling that on and off you can see the difference that's made. So again hitting V we can see before and after our colour grading. Just going to rename this clip colour correction. So if you're happy with the effects that you've created and the colour adjustments you can go ahead and save this effect so that you don't have to go through the whole process every time. Just go to File, Save Video Effects Preset, rename your preset. In this case, we're going to call it S Log 3 Color Correction. Just make sure to save that to My Effects or whatever you like, just to make it easy to find the next time. Hit Save when you're done. So a good thing about this process is you can save multiple effects to this folder and you know they might be slightly different. Here are some of the different versions I've saved and you can pick and choose the ones that you like the best and make some adjustments to each one. So I've got eight effects saved and I'll show you the difference they make when we apply them to the footage. I do like the look of this effect but it's maybe just a little dark so we can just go back to our colour effects and make some adjustments. And just use the colour wheels to make some adjustments. is a really quick way to get a stylized look that's unique to you that you like 
and just gives you a base level to work from instead of having to go through the whole colour grading process every time you import footage. Simply save your effects and make minor adjustments as you go. So there you have it, that is my colour grading process for editing videos. Now, colour correcting and colour grading is purely subjective and I'm not saying this is by any means the perfect solution to colour grading footage. This is simply how I colour grade my footage and I just wanted to share that with you. If you found any of the content in the video useful then please leave a like below, it really does help and if you're new to the channel then please consider subscribing for similar content in the future. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.